For a long time, I didn't know what Confluence blogs were for. They were just hanging out there in my space, and I pretty much ignored them. And many folks I worked with ignored them too. Then I started using them for regular updates and found them to be incredibly useful. So here, I'm going to show you what blogs are in Confluence and share some ideas that you could use to make them more useful for your teams. So let's jump in. Here we are in Confluence Cloud Premium, but blogs exist in every flavor of Confluence. I'm just in my space, and in the top left, there's a button that says Blogs. Now, right off the bat, you might not see this, and that might be because your space administrator has turned it off. If I go into Space Settings and click on Features, there'll be a button here that lets me turn off blogs. I always recommend groups turn it off if they're not using them, just so it doesn't take up space. So if you don't see it, talk to your space administrator or your IT team to go turn it on. One thing to keep in mind about blogs is they only exist in the one space they're created. So similar to how a page lives in the space it was made in, the same is true for a blog. So when I create one by clicking this Create button, it will assume I want it in the Robert Heen space. And that's also true if I create it using this plus or hitting the B button on my keyboard. It will make it in the space I'm currently looking at. So here, I'm just going to make a blog. And you'll notice it looks almost identical to what it looks like when I create a page. And that's because the editor is almost identical. I'll have to give it some kind of name. And then, of course, I can fill in whatever information about it I want. I have all the options as a page. I can do headers, bold, italicize. I can change the alignment. There's various colors. Add my lists. I have macros and layouts. And I even have the ability to do things like insert emojis. Again, identical to what I can do on a page. Now, one big difference you might have noticed is there's no templates. If I click on my more actions, the templates menu doesn't exist. And I find this to be an annoyance using blogs because I tend to use the same structure every week for an update. Now, there is a way around this, and I'll link the video up here, but essentially you have to make a page using that template and convert it into a blog. That said, you can also just copy and paste in whatever structure you need. You can also restrict your blog just like you can a page. And when you're ready, just publish. Now, if I click more actions, I can see more options, including adding a version comment, and then I can publish. This will add my blog to the spaces list of blogs, and I can see these by clicking up here on blogs. And what I like about this is they are displayed chronologically. I can see just the blog posts from last year or this year, and I can see them in some different formats. For example, a list, a compact list, or cards, which tends to be what I end up using. This for me is a great way to review information going back through time. And this is one of the main use cases I have for blogs. If I have regular updates, for example, every Friday, I publish an update on how the team is doing, they'll all show up here. So I can easily see what's going on with a certain team or project. If I use labels, which I always recommend teams do, I can also then do a search for only blog posts containing those labels. So if I go to my advanced search, I might say type is blog and label is the name of a project and I can instantly get every update about that project. Another use case I have for blogs are things like my own performance. How am I doing over time? I can put in every few weeks my own performance notes and then I'll remember it when it's time for a self-review at the end of the year. Now there is a macro that works exclusively with blogs. If I go edit a page and add the blog posts macro, this will pull in every blog post from the space that I'm in. Now, if I go to edit it, I'll have some more options. I can choose what to display, maybe just a list of titles, but I can also restrict it by labels or by time frame, or even pull in blogs from another space. This is a great way to help collate and control information. So if someone only needs updates on a certain project, you can include this macro on an update page and they'll only get blog posts about that particular project. I have found this a great way to quickly give people access to information so they don't have to sort through the blogs section or struggle with using search. So that's another great thing about blogs is we can instantly pull them in based on that macro. So that is a blog in Confluence. It looks and feels exactly like a page. However, it's intended more for point in time information, things that won't change once you publish it. And it lives in its own section that can be turned off or turned on if it's needed. So I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like it and subscribe and drop a comment in if you have other questions on how blogs could be used or if you have some ideas on how blogs could be used. I'd love to hear about them.
Thank you so much for learning with me, and I hope to see you here again soon. Mm-hmm.